Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I am Valerie, your, your neighborhood biography artist, and I'm here to help guide you on your burning adventures. And I'm joined today with Hubby. Okay. And I just realized my color is off. Where's your color off? I don't know. So I'm trying to fix it real quick. It doesn't look off to me. Well, because I just fixed it. Okay, today we are looking at doing muscle tone. Huh. Trying to catch up. So this is the reference photo that I'm using for these two guys and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by doing what pretty much everybody new to burning does and that is outlining so we can see the difference and then see it's supposed to be more yellow all right well it'll work it'll be fine so I've transferred it twice. I left out the halter in the second one. This is the one I'm looking at doing the muscles and how everything lays on each other and the light plays off of that. Um, this one I probably won't fully fill in, but I just wanted to, to quickly outline it so we can see what the difference is. And there we go. So I'm going to do what pretty much everybody new to pyrography who just goes into it and isn't quite sure what's going on and this is no judgment i did this too because you see somebody else's work and you think oh i like that so that must be how it's done or you read a book and there is a specific book that i read that i'm not even going to call out um, that pointed out doing outlines so i'm just going to show what that difference looks like and I'm gonna have to move the board so that I can get this right. Hey Eve, Sharon, Troy, Sheila, Semenes, Greg, Lana. Semenes is new and hopefully I just said that right. Um, Semenes? Huh? I think it's Semenes or Semenes. So right now I don't know why I'm so shaky, but you see what a lot of people do because they're not sure is they outline the pencil because they're afraid it's going to go away as they are working. So let's get that down real quick. Now in your dark areas that can help you. But if you go too dark, it is going to really stand out. So let's get that. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Because I think, I think I'm shaking because it's so far down on my um, easel. And I haven't burned in two weeks. Pete's here. Hey, Pete. And I'm doing this one because Pete requested more muscle tone. Yeah, I haven't burned in two weeks. I mean, I did turn on the Walnut Hollow last week, but other than that. Well, you've been working on <sighs> another aspect of the project that you're working on, so. Look is due to be done by tomorrow. All right, so we got that down. Oh, Barrel's here. Hey, Barrel. And then I got sick, or not sick. I went into a really bad, not often happening flare-up. <coughs> Excuse me, flare-up. And that knocked me down for days. Hate when that happens. Especially when I got things to get done. I don't want to spend all day in bed. Alright. Just want to have enough down so that when I go to shade any muscles, um, it will be easier to discern. Is that what you're outlining? Yeah, this one is just to show what happens when you outline and then try to do the muscles versus no outline and doing the muscles. This is what most people need a burning will do. 
So that's what I'm trying to show. And most will, all their pencil lines they laid down will burn those in. Gotcha. Um, Sharon H. Sir? Hey, Sharon. Because tomorrow's a, well, I don't know, May 1st is her birthday. Oh, well, we have to, you know, I have to come up with a, a toasty happy birthday song that way. I don't have to worry about getting copyright mm. strike for what I do. Um, and David Zinman is here. He says hi, a new burner. Hi, David. Welcome. Alrighty. So, I think I got as much as I'm going to put down. If I, if I have time to go further, then I will. This is just the main lines that I think most people would burn when they're new. There we go. And I'm skipping the halter on this one too because I think it'll kind of distract from what I'm trying to talk about. Mm. If I was burning this as a real project, it would be much larger because I'm not going to get a whole lot of detail. And I would remove the halter. Um, all right. So that's, though, so, kind of looks weird without his ear, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's put the ear in. Somebody new to burning would pretty much, <clears throat> overall, in general, if they haven't been watching my videos, or uh, like Brenda, though Brenda does sometimes use outlines, or Ricky. Oh, there we go. Not so hot. We'll, we'll do a similar brown like this. So now I'm going to switch over. That was my 9M. I'm going to switch over to my 18S. And we are going to try to do the same areas without outlining and talk about um, what we're looking at. Sorry, I needed a sip of hot cocoa. You know, I'm hot. Did I make it okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. Very good. Alrighty, so I turned it down to two and a half. Now I'm going to go this way, that way it's easier for me and it's higher up on my easel. Okay. As we see, this is a white horse. And looking, I think this is a good picture to show that just because it's a white horse, not everything is white. In fact, we got a lot of grays. We got some browns. We have some blacks. It's almost blue to me. And that's just the lighting. Um, I'm not sure what time of day it was taken. We can see. Let me see if I can do this right. <laughs> We can see right here on this side of the horse, it's much brighter. So that's telling us that the light is coming from this direction. And when we're looking at those muscles and tendons and bone structure, wherever it's darker, that means it's further from the light. It is like in the neck, it is indenting more. It's rolling, it's curving. So that's why it's darker in this area. So let's get that down. I'm not going to go as dark as I think it should be. You look at my reference more. Because if I go a little lighter, now it doesn't have to be like full on light, because then it'll take forever to darken the burn. And I think I probably should be a little bit better on saying that. But I'd say one to two steps down for where you want your finished burn will be lighter. And going up against the graphite, not burning over it because once I burn over the graphite, it's harder to erase. And it shows through any lighter burns. I'm just going to follow 
that darker see right here this is where it's overlapping we have two muscles right here we've got this is the chest in fact i can do this now we are at the <coughs> chest so what we're looking at is two muscles one on each side for the top part of the legs shoulders no shoulders are up here I'm not sure what we'd call this so breastbone fault would fall under this line it is the furthest from the sun, so that area is going to be darker. And in doing that without burning a line, like I did here, so let's go ahead and fill this in. And filling this in, all we see is that dark line. And even though I have not changed the setting on my burner, because that line is darker, this burn that I'm doing now looks lighter. And then you'll find yourself going darker and darker trying to match it to what you're looking at. And then you've turned the burn really dark. Let's get this in. And this is why I went ahead and outlined part of it, just so I can show the difference. So now how, look how much our outlines are still standing out. And as I, make sure I'm on camera, I can go back and deepen where the indents are and it'll look darker because it's not outlined. Let's see here, the neck comes down and this side is actually lighter because we've got light hitting on this side of the horse so I'd say the lights coming more it's coming from the back but more to what would be the left side of the horse so I'm following that lighting um, real quick mm -hmm. um, David Zedman uh, he says he's trying not that line he's trying not to burn like that but it is hard um, it feels overwhelming. I, I completely, completely get that. I really do. And Spence over the fence is here. Hey, Spence. Yeah, I, I know it feels overwhelming to try to burn without an outline. <clears throat> so say if you really felt you needed to outline because you're just not feeling confident with yourself, I would lightly... Turn down your heat and tap in along that line with a lower heat. That way when you go to a race, you're, you've got a faint burn right there, but it's still enough that you can blend in without having to go so dark on your subject that you lose what you're looking for. So what I'm going to do right there. So all I did was follow my lines, and since this is a darker area, if it's in a lighter area, I'd go even lighter. But now that I have that darker air, that outline, I can blend it in so that it doesn't feel outlined. It's turning down the heat and not making a solid line will help and, and sometimes when you're doing negative burning it does look like you're outlining and see now i can fade up but the line i had is blended into that part of the horse um. without it looking like this so i did outline but i was able to blend in to my darkest burns uh, area. <coughs> Go ahead. How does focus look for everybody? Beryl says it looks a bit blurry, but she says she needs to get her eyes checked. Uh, let me check. I want to make sure that we're not. See, that's blurry. Not blurry. Blurry. Okay, that... Not blurry. That's okay, good. I just check in. I hurt my eyes. <laughs> Are you sorry? I wasn't trying to hurt your eyes. Maybe that'll show a difference for, for the uh, 
Yeah, it was very Sesame Street. It was very Grover <laughs> just now. Blurry. Not blurry. Don't do that too much. Don't want to get hit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I would keep erasing because if I, like I said, if I f keep burning over my graphite, it's going to show through the light burn. So just going really light will hopefully help to turn it down. So on the neck, this area is lighter and that's because it is, it is further up and this is going to be a hard thing to explain. Um, when things are closer to the light, they're lighter and when they're further away, they're darker. So right here, this part of the muscle is further away because it's curving, so it's darker. This part of the muscle is lighter because it's closer to the light. Hopefully I didn't just confuse everybody, but I'm not... <laughs> I need to pop the neck up. We've moved from the chest. And Beryl says, okay, I check it is. <laughs> and that's why I did it, to see if he... Felt the difference there. All right, so here, this is further from the light. So I'm gonna start off going darker. Not my full dark, that way I have room for adjustment. We have it indent there. And then where the jaw meets, the jaw sticks out. And so it's getting hit by the light, whereas this is recessed. So it's not getting hit by the light. So we would negative burn around the jaw so that we can keep from outlining, but still have our shapes. Looking at my photo, it's darker up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slow down and kind of focus on that area to darken it. I haven't adjusted my heat at all. I am almost at three. Um, and then I'm going to curve around so that we get that feeling of a different plane. This area is lighter, where it is more raised. And I'm going to kind of blend out so that I don't have such, such stark lines. If I kind of blend it out too much, it's okay. I can always go back and darken. This way I can go ahead and get the graphite off the board when I'm ready. See there, I tap down harder. Not harder, but smaller area, which will require me now to blend it out. But that's okay, that just makes me be, makes this go a little faster. So, we have a little light here, but then it fades off. It's probably hard to see, but I have more dashes than I do like full on <clears throat> lines, and that is so. I know that's more of a shadow. That's more for me. Um, whatever works for your brain, absolutely do. Put this dark in just so I can have it. This is a hair blowing across. Kind of looks like a <laughs> like a goat horn. I, you know what? That's what I thought of when I first saw it. What a yeah, it's not. It's it's hair and a clump going across under the ear. So up here in the neck, in order to have this light in the middle kind of marked out, I'd go ahead and bump up to here. Kind of tap it in. I'm trying to go in the direction of the hair. Now this horse does, you can see more of the hair pattern in the horse, but I'm not going to focus on that right now because I'm just looking at the muscles. Let's bring this down over. 
You absolutely transfer as many lines as your brain needs. If you see more or less on mine, don't don't yank yourself because we all see things differently. Now, if more information helps, then absolutely do that. All right, have that tapped in. Let's see. My lines are really light. This is graphite paper, wax-free graphite paper, not carbon paper. And that makes a big difference. And with carbon paper, you'll spend a lot of time trying to darken your lines to cover it because you won't be able to erase it. Guess another reason not to use carbon paper. All right. We got some muscles in here. Muscles that are recessed have less light hitting them. The muscles that are closer to the light have more light. So we'll just keep, let's see here. I've kind of moved off the neck. So we will, let's see here. I'm trying to remember what has what. I can't remember. Nope, not the legs. Chest has more. All righty, we'll do that. And down here, I have a darker shadow. So I'm gonna get that in there. And I did put this reference photo link down in my description. That way, if you wanna practice um, by following along, which you can. Now some areas are just going to be lighter because even though they're away from the light and that's just because the tonal value of that certain area is just lighter. But it's a white horse, we're not seeing a whole lot of white on it. Bring that up. Yeah, we figured out by looking at the photo, this part up here is lighter, but this part down here is darker. So we'll blend it out. If at all possible, it's harder for me to do in such a small area. Follow the planes of the muscles. So what I mean is this part of the neck is going this way. This part of the neck is going this way behind the shoulder is going this way and curving so you do want to follow the direction of the hair and the muscles the way they go that way everything looks like what you're trying to do because if i keep like right here this actually kind of comes down at an angle doesn't go straight up and down, it comes down at an angle. But I burned sideways and it kind of threw it off. So I'm going to go back over it more at the angle that it is. So that helps. So we've got that in so far. Now, if we go over here, and what I normally see with people burning. Like I said, me included, this is definitely no judgment. This is hopefully just to help. I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, well, I shouldn't be burning because she says I'm doing it wrong. It's not that you're doing wrong. This is more of a coloring book style, and if that's what you're going for, for that piece of art, then absolutely do that. If you're going for realism and not getting it, this is the biggest reason that I see why is the outlines. The next would be slowing down and paying attention to the detail. See here, because I burned so dark, I'm actually going to have to up my heat. Work with me here. There we go. I'm going to up it to three and a half. And if you know, so far I've um, only used one pen on this horse. I've used two because I did the outline. Which pen? 
18 small. Um, I've only, yeah, I've only used one pen. I haven't switched, and this is the first time I'm upping my heat. And that's just so I can get this dark. So what I would normally see is people go really dark to try to blend it out. Make that light that right now I'm out of habit. I'm trying to actually uh, smooth things out. Let's see here. So let's see dark here. I'd see dark here. Let's see, dark here. Oh, Greg has to go. Bye, Greg. <clears throat> and see, it does look nice with the darks. Don't get me wrong, it does look nice. But looking at it, you can still, even with these darks, you can still see the outline. So you could start darker on the horse, like, uh, let's see here, let's go back over here where I didn't outline. I could start off darker without outlining. Everybody's so quiet. Hmm? Everybody's so quiet. Um, I think they're probably just watching. Yeah, let me pin heat up for a minute because it's cooled off. Like it's totally normal. Just trying to think of how I've seen those new to burning. Um, how some of their pieces have looked and then their frustration of why it didn't look the way they wanted it. You know, we were talking about the hair coming across the forehead looking like a goat horn. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, the reason why that that's, reads like that is because if you're outlining, you're causing additional weight with those lines. So it gives a lot of weight to the hair. So it doesn't feel light like hair, it feels heavy, Thank solid. You. Very good point. So, let's just... so if you're searching for nuance, like you said, sometimes outlining is a choice or it's a style. And uh, Eve said earlier that that um, she liked aspects of both of them. Um, well, she said she didn't hate the outline version. It's a different style, is all. Yeah. But um, which is true. But but if you're going for realism. But there's certain things that that you that are problematic when you're outlining because it doesn't convey certain things well. So. All right. So. Bridal. It's gonna be dark. Put that in real quick, and then I'll move back over to the All right. at least this way I can just do it one stroke. Pretty much. <laughs> You're talking about dragons in chat. Dragons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta finish mine. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna turn, I'm not gonna go all the way down as to where I was. That way we can get through this quicker. So I'm at three. I'm gonna go ahead and put 
put this line in. So, Charlie and I, a long while back, we were talking about it'd be cool to have a like a Renaissance fair, but like a more serious one. So, like, we'd actually have like a like an inn where there was actual like bar fights and stuff, and you know, you could do quests. And the concept of a dragon came up, and Troy suggested that we have a cave that had like a World War II flamethrower, and every oh, like gosh. every hour or so, we just turn on the flamethrower, you know. And it would just like blow fly, fire out the side of the cave. <laughs> so many have, issues with that. It may, may not have been the safest thing, but it would have been cool. And how old like, were come you? Come on, kids, let's go see the dragon! Yay! How old were you? Twenty. Yeah, it sounds about right. <clears throat> so this is a much darker area down here. And see with light though I'm not having it happen so much here because this was green grass that I just pulled out of the background so it wasn't distracting but light hits objects and bounces back up we don't have it happening so much down here at the bottom where the light is hitting now if it was on sidewalk the light would hit every area of the horse that's going to hit but it's also going to hit the sidewalk and then bounce back up. And that would actually make some of these areas under here just as light as some of the areas up here because that's the light reflecting up. But in this case, we don't have it. Yeah, and light has physical properties just like anything else. And if it's bouncing off a hard surface like that, you're going to get more reflection as opposed to... A softer, rest, less reflective surface. Amy Hess is here. Hey, Amy. All right. So. Yes, I have painted a few dragons. <laughs> the dragon's not looking like I wanted it to. I need to do another dragon soon. Okay. I haven't painted one in a while. Well, you wanted to do a club. But I don't know that you want to collab with me. <laughs> Why not? Why? Because you'd hand me a drawing and I'll go, okay, I want this and that. And I'd just sit there and mark it up. Well, and it would get to the point that you're like, we wouldn't do that. Like, I know better. Like, <laughs> you would do a dragon, I would do a dragon. And we'd have our different dragons. Okay, just trying to get enough down so I can erase so we can see. So this tendon really sticks out in the leg. So here for the tendon, I'm trying to think of other objects to compare to that way. It's easier to visualize. Hmm. Tendon here. Well, think of folds of fabric. Um, there's area of the fabric that is folded away from the light and then there's areas of the fabric that hit the light or the light hits it sometimes and that's what gets gives you the fold look and we do have a bit of a fold going on here the look of a fold so it might help I just want to know so I can go ahead and hurry up in the race. But I need the light to really define these muscles more. Because I, I looked at other ones and uh, other photos, and if the strong was more of a midday sun, the light was more of a midday sun, you saw less of the muscles. But as the, the light shifted, and there is more contrast. You see more of the muscles. All right. And 
this is round, so we need to follow that shape. It wouldn't be a straight up and down. It would be more of a curve like this. And those strokes will help convince your viewer of your piece that that is more round along with the light. So let's see here. I should be able to... Sheila says that they can't see the tendon. You can't see the what? The tendon. I don't know. Oh, I need to switch. Because I'm down on the legs. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, okay. Let me make it bigger since I've moved my board. So right now what I was talking about is the tendon on this leg. If you, what sucks is my fingers behind the uh, picture. Mm. So if you look, the tendon curves. So the top part of each of those tendons is closer to the light. And then you've got the fleshy part in between. That fleshy part isn't having the light hit it. And that's what makes it darker. So following those curves with the tonal value that they are is going to help. Like in this part of the leg right here, you really see that thigh muscle. That it's not so well. We'll call it a thigh muscle because it looks like a kicking. Actually, it looks more of a drumstick. But this part of the muscle right here is really defined, and that's because of the tendon on this side is pushing out that muscle along with the light. So because this tendon is raising the muscle, it brings it closer. So it's lighter. This area is darker. And then this side is darker because we don't have light hitting it. So that's what helps shape it. I was erasing. That's what I was doing. I was like holding the eraser going, what was I doing? I think um, getting the musculature right in something also adds weight um, and believability to the subject because it, you know, we, we see these things as, uh, you know, in nature. And so seeing the muscle groups and things and how they're under stress and how they relate to the overall figure helps add believability to it. There we go. So I've erased some of the graphite. And hopefully you can see the difference. Now, like I said, things over here would go darker, but not as dark as the lines that I have here. So let's finish that leg while we're there. So we have the muscle that's coming out right here. And it's forming down. We have a tendon here. I still want This is a lighter area. This is coming across. Yeah, let's see, this muscle is right here. I touched down a little hard there. We've got wrinkles here, so I shall blend it out so it's not so obvious what I did. You see now, this feels more like a meaty leg than just the outlines. And we do have a little reflected light hitting right here or underneath. It's kind of hard to tell which one. So I'm going to touch down in a darker area and pull it over. 
because I want to blend this line so that it's not a stark line, but it gives more believability and that muscle. Then this is a darker area here. I think part of it has to do with the fur hair color. It also has to do with the shape. Sometimes the graphite does get in the way of knowing what's what when you start burning. So I'm trying to get as much as I can so I can just go ahead and take it all. I think I have This also has hair hanging down, so it's going to look a little odd because I'm not focusing on that. Let's see. <clears throat> now this wrinkle right here kind of put it in too dark. So, angle more. Bring the other one down. This one I think it actually turned my heat down that way. Careful on touchdown. Kind of blend it. Direction. See, this is not fully light. It's lighter. Some of it's a little too stark. <clears throat> Blend that out a little bit. See here, I've really sectioned off that, unintentionally sectioned off that muscle too much. So, oh, yeah, I'm going to the grain. Break that up a little bit. And I'd have to keep going back and forth working it. Because right now that actually looks like the muscle layout of a horse, not the actual horse with the skin over it. That's what I'm seeing. But I think it would require working it more so that I don't see that. Yeah, this looks like if you're looking at a, med uh, a medical book for a horse, that the way I've done the leg. Unintentionally is how I would see the muscles laying out. Not what I want. So uh, Pete wants to know what was that you used? I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about the sticker race, the stick sander. That is. I do have it listed on my kit page and Amazon page it's called Sanding Twigs. And this one is fine. They come in a uh, baggie of 100. So all they are is when you when they make an emery board, these are just the cut off sides. And the reason I know that is just from the pattern and color that they used on, on the stick. But it's enough that as long as I'm not digging into the wood, they're smooth enough to keep the burn area smooth. Sometimes if I have to go 
too heavy on my sanding. <clears throat> I have to go back with 400 grit paper just to kind of smooth things out. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because if you lived in a place that didn't have like a art supply store or wood supply store and you needed to get sanding twigs, you could always go to the grocery store or to, you know, wherever and get some memory ports. Yep, cut them up. Cut them up. Yep. <clears throat> Pete says, another item to add to a shopping list. <laughs> Luckily, those um, they're I, I clip them off with scissors just because I'm in the middle of working and I don't feel like getting up and uh, stopping what I'm doing. You can actually um, rinse them off. Ah, they're reusable. I use. It seems like I mean that's very thrifty, but at a hundred a pack, it seems like. Well, yeah, the because it's it's twenty in a single pack and it comes with five. Of those thing of those packs wow that's like that's enough to last you years yeah that's why I haven't been yeah. too worried about it I mean yeah I guess if I get down to like my third pack I might start <laughs> just so I don't have to I know Pete's over in the UK so it's going to cost more Gila actually has them um, so Gila would have a better idea of what the cost is over there. Barrel's just reminding me because I said if you didn't have access to it, and Barrel's like Amazon, Jason, Amazon. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I forget about that when I think. Because I do all the Amazon shopping. Because I had a moment the other day. We were watching this movie. And, <laughs> oh, and you cut the tell phone them? lines, and somebody was watching TV in the in the show, and I was like, "Wait a minute, the phone lines are cut. How are they getting TV?" <laughs> and I turned to Val. And I was like, "Oh my God, I just had like a millennial thought." And she's like, what? And I was like, I, for a second, I forgot that the TVs don't, you know, back when, when I grew up. Even now, though. Even now, yes. Like, you get, you got them with reception. And they, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't uh, hardwired to anything. You know, where I grew up, we could get three channels in, in Alaska. And that was about it. We could get that and a UHF channel in some of them didn't come in very well, but yeah, we didn't need, that was one of the luxuries because you didn't have to have any kind of, um, you know. It's just funny that your brain went to, I how have, are they watching so TV without? I so used to it, <laughs> but I can imagine like confusion for millennials, uh, for, you know, I say millennials, but for people who were born after that era, they'd be like, this movie's dumb. Like they wouldn't have TV, you know, if the phone lines were out, you know. No, the or, TV or wouldn't go down at the... Or they'd be like, oh, I see what well, what about the cell towers, you know? Like, everybody's got cell phones. Except we absolutely didn't. No. Nope. That was funny, though. Because the look on your face was... You were a bit embarrassed. <laughs> I, I share my embarrassment freely. Sharon says, I remember three channels. Yep. I remember when we got cable. That was such a big deal. In the cable box, you still had to get up, but it slid back and forth until you got to the... You had to slide the thingy to the channel number you wanted, and there was a 99 numbers on that box. I stayed... We stayed with a family that had cable. It was, like, amazing to me, because they had... Um, HBO and the movie channel and this was like an 80 something mm -hmm. and it was just to me it was just like phenomenal like how is this happening so I'm just using the tip to uh, the pen to get the eye in just so we got it Yeah. Well, the um, so far the the one that you're shading carefully looks more like a um, it looks more like a oops, sorry, an advanced drawing with a lot more nuance, whereas the one on the right looks like a how-to on how to draw a horse almost a bit because of the outlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And that's why I wanted to show the difference of what not outlining does. Yes, Sharon. I we only had black and white TV until I was about twelve or thirteen, I think. It was just black and white, and I remember like being confused because when we get color because there was some things that I just assumed were certain colors and they weren't. So, like what? Um, I always thought that the car on Starsky and Hutch. That's revealing my age. I always assumed it was a blue, and it wasn't. It was red. What's funny is when you said the name, when you said it, blue was the first thing that popped in my head. But, um, and like Sesame Street, like I didn't know the colors of the monsters. Like I, Big Bird was yellow. Because they said it. Because, because they, you know, that was like an association. Like watching Star Trek, like I didn't realize like the different colors of uniforms and stuff. Weird. I know my drawing's off on the nose. Um, it's a very small area. Unfortunately, the photo wasn't as uh, detailed as I'd like in this area. My horse has got some serious five o'clock shadow. Not your it drawing, does. Not your well drawing and the photo though. Oh, absolutely, and it's throwing my brain off. Yeah, it's like one of those private eye horses from like, <laughs> film noir. Yeah, it's throwing my brain off too. I'm gonna have to look at flipping this because it feels so off. And there's a lot you don't see because this area is black. I'll come back to it. Well, I did most of it with just one pen. Mm -hmm. So now I can pop over to the neck and start darkening up. I'm not gonna focus on the whole thing because we're already at we're already at we're already noon. An hour. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to just focus on one area that really stands out about muscles. So we need to figure out about next week. As soon as I'm done writing the article, finish it up um, on the ravens, I gotta start on the owl. Yeah. Because that due date is... I guess Beryl is, is uh, doing owls next. Mm -hmm. She got a darling photo that she took. So, I guess you and her will be doing pyrography of owls at the same time in different places. From different photos. In different photos. <laughs> If it's the photo she sent me, it's so cute. I'll show it to you. Mm. He took it last week while he was on a mini photograph. I don't know, was it a class girl or just a scouting type trip? Because he's been going on tours to find different animals. I guess would be the best way to describe it. Alright, so we got light hitting here. I'm still not dark enough here. So let's see. Rose has got more photos now. Oh. If you ever get the baby raven, I'll beg her for the photo. <laughs> and she'll beg her to use the photo. 
She says it was a private tour for three of them. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like her, um, remember last year when she went uh, for looking for bears? Mm -hmm. Why did she go looking for bears? Photos. Oh, okay. That was the one of the first uh, pieces that I critiqued was her bear in the water. In Alaska, you don't go looking for bears. Bears come looking for you. <laughs> yeah, see, there's so much detail in here that would make more sense to the viewer. If this wasn't so small. Girl, but I, girl says don't hold your breath for the baby ravens. I know. She's not going to climb up a cliff for me. I oh, know. I tried. Yeah. If anybody's got a photo of baby ravens that, they've ta that they have taken, yeah. wouldn't mind me burning. Absolutely send me a message. <laughs> Though I'm working on, uh, or I'll start in between all of this, um, on another project that. Oh, there it is. I'll just say that I, I've contacted a pretty big photographer who is uh, allowing me to use one of his photos. I didn't. I did not post that on Instagram. I thought you. Would, I I'm. Just, I'm not saying who it is. I, of either the right. photographer or the subject. Yeah. It's big people. It's really big. Secret squirrel can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ecstatic when the photographer. That's another thing. Absolutely contact the photographer of uh, photos that you like. Don't just take those photos. Because a lot of those uh, photographers are happy to let you use their photos. Mm -hmm. They're excited to see their photo in a different media and what you do with it. And uh, this photographer was extremely nice. About Honestly, I walked in thinking, eh, pretty big photographer. Um, based on his subject matter and who I'll just say who he's taken photos of that I wasn't sure how he would feel about it but I got almost an immediate response back which surprised me and he was all excited for it told me, told me go for it couldn't wait to see what I did with it I was like whoo -hoo. And I, ju I just ran across the same thing you following our Instagram or Hanzo. Are you posting it on Hanzo's? Or? Well, yeah, because it was that was the profile that I contacted her on. Oh. So, but um, yeah, same thing. Like, not not a huge celebrity, just a band. But um, but I contacted the photographer and got a really positive response, and so far it's working out really well. So. All right. So let's click over real quick back to the outlines of which I got to go darker and see how much I can get it to look like this. Now this horse is not done, but in the scheme of what I've been doing for the last hour, I'm actually not heating it. No. It's looking closer to what I was wanting. I would keep working it. I'm running out of places on this board. The other side taken? Yep. Uh, we already did the other side. I did not know that. Yeah, the other side has got that piece that I kind of need to keep covered because it's an eye, but not an eye. Oh, yeah. Yes, the abstract. Yeah, let's not go through that again. <laughs> um, Can't unsee it once you see it. No. Should I flip the board, guys? No, you should not. <laughs> you should definitely not. Now I need to hear from Pat and David and Spence are, I know they're all newer to pyography, so that's why I'm kind of focusing on them. Um, by confusing you, 
because sometimes I think I'm just feeling like I'm blabbing and confusing. I don't know. So I don't think so. It helps to know. They've had questions whether they've had questions. So. Let's see here. Just trying to get the neck the way somebody might who's new to pyography do it. Yeah, see that hair is really throwing me off and I can't do so much with it because I've outlined it. So I would have to look at darkling, darkening other hair. So it doesn't look like a horn. <laughs> Spence says you're very helpful and clear. Oh, good. Vera wants to know, are we still doing a community burn at some point? At some point, yes. Right, right now, oh gosh. there's too much going on. Like, honestly, yeah. I, I... When that flare-up hit on Thursday morning, we almost went, we almost had a hospital run this past weekend. Yeah, I, I was really, actually, really concerned for you. I mean, I had just come off of not doing well either. So we lost, like, two weeks of productivity almost in between you and me. Me messing up my ravens and... Well, you didn't mess them up. You fixed it. Yeah, but that took a couple extra days to fix. Well, Not a couple hours. At least couple... you didn't have to redo it, though. I almost did. I know. Aren't you glad? You glad I talked you out of it? Yes, thank you. That's what I do. But yeah, I almost... <laughs> I wasn't trying to ignore anybody, especially in group or anything like that, but... I mean, maybe that's why you had the flare up. You have so many high profile things going on right now. I don't think so because I was just sitting there working on the on the um, pattern. I wasn't stressed. I wasn't. I was listening to something on YouTube and just going. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't anything um, stressful for me. Maybe a little tedious because I had to fix my pattern and basically redo it in order to get it the way I wanted it, but it was not anything stressful. All right. So see, I really can't burn out or blend out. I've been sitting here trying. This can go darker, but I feel this, especially in this area, for what it is, is... Um, too dark on the lines. Let's see. It would be good if you're doing like lithography because it needs that bold lines. Yeah, it completely depends on like that's what why you're going for. Like Mooka, like his poster, poster prints that he did way back when. That's why they look like they do because he needed those bold lines, and those were very popular. But his actual art. You know, especially his drawing was a lot more delicate. I know that came out of the blue. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So yes, I do absolutely still want to do the community project, but I've got to get So many projects done. We're coming to a and time and where we our work is really picking up and it's it's almost daunting like how much like I, I have another painting that I have to get done before when is the, that show? I think it's June. June. So I've gotta get that done. Um 
so that's a whole other painting and plus I missed a show this year because we just I didn't have enough time and I, I, I have to get back on it and you've been constantly busy so well I've also got we've also got world pornography month coming up in August oh god yep I'm changing the... I'm not looking forward to that. Well, I'm changing the... <laughs> it's not going to be 30 pieces in 30 days because I can't even do it. Yeah. All right. So, this one I would continue darkening. This one isn't bad. And even as dark as it is, if it didn't have the outlines, I think I'd like it much better. Well, the, the deep contrast that's inside is actually really helpful. It is. Let's see if I can get some over here. And I'm sure that the the one on the left, I'm sure that as you progress, that it would accumulate more of that, that contrast, you know, as you worked on it more. So. It would. Let's see. Let's see. I'm just going to focus on the neck so that we can see the difference of not outlining but needing that contrast. Pete wants to know what is World Pyrography Month? <laughs> <laughs> it is a challenge that I came up with, even though I couldn't finish my own challenge. I actually have videos on it there's a playlist and I'm revamping the way I did it from last year that way um, it's easier for everybody to do because yeah you could get a burning done a day but I'm really hoping that people slow down and when you're trying to do one a day you're not slowing down so I'm going to do it a little different. I do have a group for it that right now I'm not really posting in because, you know, it's not time yet to focus on it. Um, so just trying to think. Robert Fisher is here. He says, evening, everyone. Hey, Robert. All right. Let's see a little bit more contrast helps. I haven't seen Ted in a while. He hasn't been in group either. I'm going to say, because Troy's here. Normally, him and Ted. Normally, him and Ted create some amusing discourse. Uh, I'm going to check on him. It's just. I feel bad when I don't check on people, but I don't know about group two. I'm busy. I know, that's not the point though. I know. This is going to be a busy couple of weeks. Couple of months. I don't know. I don't think it'll slow down for me until November. That's assuming that you don't get any new projects. I think that the way things are going, I think that we're going to be. We're going to be like that episode of Freelancers. <laughs> if only. Yeah. All right, let's take some more graphite. The contrast in this is really good and closer for this one where I would, where I would take it, but without having the outline. I can go darker. Just a little bit more. I'm actually going to switch over. Switch over to what? To medium ball tip just so I can scribble quicker. So wait a minute. So that's the first time I The 18S to. is a small and the 18M is medium? Yes. So the letters. Oh my god. In this so the case, L is large? Yes. I never knew that. My mind's blown. Really? Really, really. Really, really, really. I'm serious. It's so obvious, but I didn't get it. 
And that's why I'm called a gap. There, there we are. <laughs> well, that makes it. Well, so, what did the number stand for then? Is that the gauge of wire? No, just a series. That's a series. Just to, to. This is a 19. The one I used before is an 18. Ah. It's just to, to designate nothing else okay so like 19 is is it a bigger or a smaller no oh, so it has it nothing matter. to do with size okay yeah it's just i don't know if it was the 19th pin designed or anything like that uh, okay let's get some This is the first time I've actually switched pens since I put on the shooter. This is just so I can scramble quicker, almost like coloring. Yeah. Yep, I had a light bulb moment. <laughs> so I was in, um, in in the army. What one of my jobs was like tracking our our personnel for like driver's licenses, and I was going over our roster, and we had an extra person, and I was trying to figure this out because the name was different, but the first name was the same and it was like it, it, I'm, I'm just I'm gonna use a different name but it was like instead of Judy Waskowski it's like Judy Smith and I was like where is this Smith where did Wachowski go I don't understand and I was completely oblivious to the fact that this this girl's name had changed because she got married because she got married and I was trying to find a whole different person and finally one of um, one of my NCOs He's like Sergeant. He's he's like it's it's like um it's like Ace Ventura. Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> oh, we all have those moments. We all have them. <laughs> I just wasn't getting it. Oh my god. Did he tell you to you in that way? Yeah, he got frustrated. He started yelling it out. He's like, Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. I'm like, I don't understand. He's like, you have to. I was like, I don't. Where is Smith? Oh, God. What happened to Wachowski? <laughs> anyway. Is she standing right there? Is no, no, it happening? no. I finally oh. did get it. Okay. So. We all have our moments. That is funny, though. I don't think Troy heard that. Has heard that one? Probably not. And Troy tries to say he never had a moment. We know he's full of it. So uh, I'd keep darkening because right now it's going to look off because this is dark, but the rest isn't dark. So I would just keep going back and forth. I don't tend to stay in one place for too long, and that's only because I'll glance over and see something that sticks out to me that I want to fix right then and there. That way I don't forget. It is definitely not something you have to do. It's just how my brain has worked out not forgetting to do something. Yeah is not necessarily a technique it's just me trying to balance and going back and forth filling things in that is so funny Troy says what moment <laughs> which moment you mean you had to have an iron horn who, Troy? Yes. Sure he did. Sure he did. I can't think of one at the moment, though. You know he has. 
He's human. I know that might upset him by me saying that. But he is. So I keep going back and forth darkening. Trying to get everything balanced out. And he says, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let's get that line kind of straightened out. So is the uh, live stream for Warframe, is it only on Twitch or is it on YouTube as well? I think, that, well, it'll be published to Twitch. Uh, to uh, YouTube. I don't know if it will be live streamed on YouTube as well. I bring it up because Jason and Troy, their clan dojo is being... It's a game. It's a game. Is being... Not Space Ninjas. Not Space Ninjas. It is being highlighted and uh, a tour by the company live today. So I'm only making that that way if anybody's interested to, to see how your guys' dojo looks. It actually can. I feel like that that's so far out. I mean, I know. Out of left field. But you help so much that I'm trying to. I mean, not that they couldn't already see your dojo because you do have. I got some videos up. You do have some videos up. Basically, it's a massive multiplayer game, and there's public spaces that you can make for your own personal organizations, which are called clans because of space ninjas, and so it's like <laughs> old Japanese clans. And um, I have to remind him and try that it's not real. And it's totally real. It is. Anyway, and so. There's a, I think it's now semi-annual competition, or maybe even quarterly, but, but it's a competition to see who has the best dojos, and we won silver in our class, and that was kind of a big deal. And so now, like Val said, we're going to have, it's going to be highlighted by, uh, by the uh, publisher today and so the game that'll, developer that'll be yes the game developer the one who made this game and that'll be archived so it's pretty cool to have that because even though it's not art per se we use a lot of the same principles of art yeah, yeah. and design to create the spaces that we've created and there, people get really creative and imaginative in it but I guess the closest thing that I could compare it to would be Legos. In yeah, fact, we you call guys it, call it Space we Legos. Call it space Legos. So, um, anyway. And that goes, that starts in, for us, it starts in half an hour. Mm -hmm. So, Troy's already confirmed he's going to be in the dojo. Um, him and I are both going to be in the dojo. I'm going to be watching on my phone, but we're going to be conducting the tour, um, physically conducting the tour. So, and I don't know how many of their, we know at least one of their reps is coming. I don't know how many others. I know that other reps have already been there. Yeah. <laughs> Pete says, wow, well, that's real. All MMOs are real. That's like Eve <laughs> Online and that's real. You're, Who said you're that? damn right, Pete. It's <laughs> oh, real. It ain't real. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> Troy says, I'm not upset you call me human, Val, but just to point out, there's no evidence that he is. <laughs> I was being nice and calling you human. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, do we have any more questions? Please? Sharon wants to know what number is the pin that you have on. Uh, let's see here. The last one I was using was a 19M. 
Small. The M stands for medium. Yes. Medium ball tip was the, if this, that would be, was the last pin I was using. I was just trying to kind of blend things out. The main pin I used today is the 18S. And to outline this one, I used the 9M. Pretty sure that's 9M. I have to, like, poke the, touch the pokey part. Yeah, it feels like, is it? You really need to mark them. Yeah, that's a 9M. I, I sit there and poke myself with it, trying to feel the tips. Not when it's on, I hope. No, not when it's on. No, no, no. Let's see here. So, and I'm going to go ahead and pop these off. For the muscle tone, it's really looking at how the light is hitting. Where light doesn't hit. Let's see here. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Let's turn this one off so I can switch the light a little bit. I'll make some. Okay, so if this was, say, the horse's neck, right here where they're coming together, we have the light hitting here. We have the light hitting here. Both of these are closer to the light than in here. And that is that line that creates. See, I can see it better. There we go. So this part of the pen and this part of the pen, just like in the neck, are closer to the light. This is further and this is further. And that's where you're getting your shadows and it's curving around and the further away from the light, the darker. And then it comes back and as it gets closer to the light, it gets lighter. Then we've got the light and then it curves around. This is the same for muscles and bones and how they lay under the skin. I can turn that off, let's do right now. Whew, there we go. That's the same with how, uh, let's see here. I was going to use my shirt over the pins to see if that makes a point. Not really. <laughs> Trying to show it the easiest way. Put one on the towel. Uh, is there a other? I always tear them. I tear them most of the time in half. That way I'm not using a full paper towel when whisking. Oh. All right, so maybe one pin. So if this is a muscle right here with the skin laying across. It covers in a way that follows the roundness of what it's covering. So that would be the same for a cheekbone or a nose or the uh, your eyelid. It is the fab. It is the skin it's laying over a bone and muscle and it's how that light let's see if I can get a contrast somehow so when I, further away from the light the darker it is so if you're looking at a nose right say a nose one side is further from the light. Let's see if I can do it straight up and down. Okay, right here. So if this is a nose, if you're doing a portrait, because the light's coming from this direction, this is further away from the light than this side, making it darker. But what we also do have going on here, it's kind of a good thing, is because the light is hitting right here. So that would be the cheek, if you want to think about it. Be closer up if you look right here. It's kind of faint, but if you look, we have reflected light from, say, the cheek hitting back up to the nose. So, this is what gives you your shape and how the light hits the skin and how the skin lays on top of the muscles, bones, and tendons. Science. Science. Hurt my brain. 
Actually, that's not a bad. It's the same color as Sam the Eagle. It's like a mouse. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. And see, this would be the side of the nose that's going in, and then the cheek coming out. And as it comes out, the shading gets lighter. And then you've got the highlight, because that's the part that's closest to the light. So that plane is getting hit more. And then it curves around, giving you that cheekbone again. But that cheek is reflecting that light up to the side of the nose. So you, you don't see any lines. What you see is starts and stops to shadows and light. Yes. OK. Well, if we don't have anything else. Spence says that's a good example. Thank oh, you. good. And oh, bright light. Oh, there we go. So next week, let me know down in the comments or over in group what you'd like to see. Hopefully, Pete, I've answered your questions. I'm going to try to catch up on everything that I've missed in group. It's going to take me a little while. Thursday, I'm unavailable. And I do want to say, okay, I, oh, I need to get this started now. May 14th will not be alive. Let me make sure on the calendar again. Yes, May 14th. We will, won't be having a live, and we will be back the following week. So, just remember, you're awesome. Right you can do this. You're a viral artist. Happy burning, guys. Bye. Bye.